Hey everyone, my name is Shelby Hartman. I'm Double Blind's co-founder and editor-in-chief, and today we're going to talk about machine elves. What the heck is a machine elf? <laughs> If you've done DMT or are thinking about doing DMT, you may have heard about them. And basically, they're little beings or entities that people often see when they're under the influence of DMT. I know it sounds totally crazy, but it's a thing that actually happens, so let's talk about it. But before we talk about machine elves, we got to give you a little bit of context about DMT. So DMT, or dimethyltryptamine, is a powerful and fast-acting hallucinogen produced naturally by many plants and animals, humans included. DMT is endogenous. So that means, yes, DMT is actually found in the brains of mammals. People often refer to DMT as, quote, the businessman's trip because it lasts about 15 minutes. And in that 15 minutes, it can inspire a bombardment of visuals that begin with a snow of overwhelming shapes, colors, peaks, and if you're lucky, entry into another realm, actually stepping into what feels like a completely different world. Doing DMT can be a very intense experience where you lose all perception of space and time, even a sense of self. There's a reason why DMT has earned its nickname, quote, the spirit molecule. For some, DMT may only inspire intense and awesome visuals, but many who try it also are looking out for something or rather someone specific, spirits. So seeing DMT entities are experiencing some kind of presence is a common experience for those who cross a certain dosage on DMT. Terence McKenna, who was a legendary psychedelic activist and second wave pioneer, said these entities were best described as, quote, self-transforming elf machines. McKenna was one of the first and loudest activists to speak openly about his many DMT experiences. And he said in a recorded interview, quote, I encounter self-transforming elf machines, which are creatures, entities perhaps, although they're not made out of matter. They're made out of, as nearly as I can figure it out, syntax driving light. Yeah, that's what he said. By syntax, McKenna really does mean language. And he continued, they use a language which you see. It is made out of sound, it is sound, but you see it. And the entire point of the encounter from their perspective is to teach you to do this. The DMT experience is distinct from other classic psychedelic experiences, such as LSD and psilocybin mushrooms. But one thing that I'll say that's similar is that it can lead to something called synesthesia, which is essentially where you can see sound or hear color. There's like a, a, a communication that is happening between your senses that normally does not. So why are these entities called, quote, machine elves? The answer to this question is simple. They're called machine elves, or also sometimes clockwork elves, because it's the terminology that McKenna used. And McKenna's openness and honesty about his personal experiences on DMT created a pathway that others could eventually use to describe and interpret their own psychedelic experiences on DMT. Through his description of, quote, machine elves, McKenna donated trip terminology that has been widely adopted by psychonauts who follow in his footsteps. But as mentioned, machine elves are not unique to McKenna. Many people who try DMT relate to the features that he described in his trips. Geometric shapes, visualized speech, beings, vibrant colors, and sparkling ethereal light are all things that happen to a lot of people when they're on DMT. And yet, that's not always the case. Many people may not even remember what happens to them on DMT when they wake up from their experience. So what do machine elves look like? Forget images of gears, steam, computers, and engine parts. For some people, machine elves can be really different from the robotic and mechanized creations we commonly see in sci-fi space movies, for example. DMT spirits can be fractal, or they can be humanoids, animals, faces, or aliens. They can also just be a voice, 
or simply the feeling of a presence or anything else the mind can conjure up. The diversity of DMT hallucinations was reported early on by the legendary psychedelic researcher, Dr. Rick Strassman, who you also might know of from his book, DMT, The Spirit Molecule. Strassman has been investigating DMT experiences for decades, and he told Double Blind, quote, not that many people in their study saw elves, but many people did see beings possessing other shapes and forms. Strassman's findings were confirmed by more recent research. In 2018, a small study of DMT users found that more often than not, when consumers did see, quote, DMT elves, they did not look like elves at all. So if you're thinking you're going to do DMT and see, like, Santa's elves, that's probably not what's going to happen. Rather, uh, most entities appeared more amorphous and hard to describe. So the study was performed by Jennifer Like, who's a professor of psychology at Stockton University, and she surveyed uh, people from the site Airwood for common descriptions of DMT deities. And also in a much larger study published in the Journal of Psychopharmacology, a research team led by Alan Davis, who we just uh, had on Double Blind, gathered and analyzed survey data from a grand total of 2,561 different DMT consumers about their best experiences with the psychedelic. In the study, only 10 to 16 percent of people used terms like, quote, angel or elf to describe DMT entities. Instead, words like, quote, being and guide were a lot more common. <laughs> So what do DMT elves do? In other words, should you want to be having this experience? It's worth noting that when people experience what's often referred to as a mystical experience, spiritual qualities of a psychedelic trip, whether it's on DMT or some other psychedelic, oftentimes these are the most impactful parts of the experience. And Strassman talks about this. He says, quote, the function of the beings is to communicate and what they communicate is information. Their shape or form may contain that information, but more importantly, there is an exchange, a relationship between the observer and the beings, sometimes verbal, sometimes nonverbal. Then it's up to our mind, our intellect, to decipher the communication, to extract meaning from it. Meaning that it's not about what the DMT elves look like, whether they look like Santa's elves or they're some amorphous creature that you never could have conceived of before you're on DMT. What matters is that oftentimes in these kind of spirit realms, these beings are there to communicate something to you that actually could end up being really meaningful in your everyday life. According to Davis' study, most people interact with DMT spirits via emotional, intuitive, and telepathic means. These clockwork elves often feel real, like the arbiters of a deep and hidden truth. And many people report that experiencing them is a hallmark of a life-changing experience, with a notable impact on their mood, their well-being, and their overall outlook on life. In Davis' study, an amazing amount of the psychonauts reported feelings of love, trust, kindness, and joy coming from themselves and these perceived spirit entities. And a large majority of people also reported that they felt like the entities had intelligence, a consciousness of their own. Most people also felt that they were sacred and that they existed in their own world and they had a message to deliver. Again, I know this might all sound a little bit kooky, <laughs> but you know, the psychedelic experience in and of itself is inexplicable, and there's still so much that we don't understand about why it is that people go into psychedelic experiences, they see things or they feel things or they hear things that they can't wrap their minds around, and then they emerge at the other end feeling like they've received a lot of healing from their internal distress. Now, it goes without saying that you know, not everybody is going to have a positive DMT experience. Every single trip is different. Every single person is different. And a good number of people may also not enter this, quote, 
spiritual realm. It's also not a guarantee that you're gonna experience DMT entities, or if you do, that they're gonna have anything meaningful to say to you. So for a lot of people, DMT hallucinations can actually be really scary. During Davis's survey, 41% of people felt fear during their experience, 23% reported that they felt the beings had an authoritative presence, and 16% actually felt negatively judged by the beings, while 11% felt that these beings were malicious. Why exactly these entities are a common experience when on DMT is still a complete mystery. But after decades of research, Rick Strassman was able to provide some insight, telling Double Blind, quote, people can only imagine things that they have already seen or experienced. The component parts may rearrange themselves in different ways, but those component parts must already exist in the mind of the subject. Colors, shapes, movement. Psychedelics, including DMT, help us perceive things that are normally invisible, and those have to be made manifest in a way that is visible, that we can recognize no matter how strange. Essentially what he's saying here is you can't, you know, see something or experience something that is made up of components that you have never experienced in your entire life. When you're seeing and experiencing something that feels novel and new, it's really just a rearrangement of components that you're already familiar with in non-DMT realms. And he continues on with this practical perspective saying, quote, it says more about our mind-brain complex than the spirit world. We can't necessarily assume that we're tapping into an objective freestanding external level of reality. It may be, simply put, our brain on drugs. He goes on to say, the drugs modify our brains in ways Ways that only our individual brain can be modified because of who we are individually. And then we perceive things that we normally cannot perceive. These things may exist within us, in our psyche, or they may exist outside of us. But what is outside of us is difficult to determine because the arena, the platform within which we experience the psychedelic state is our subjective mind consciousness. All of that said, it doesn't really matter, at least at this point, where the information resides. Dark matter, our visual cortex. What matters is how much information we get from the state and how we can apply that information to receive as much healing or insight as we're seeking from the experience. If you're interested in learning more about how to use psychedelics or reading more about machine elves or growing mushrooms, we cover so much of this on our website, doubleblindmag.com. We have courses, webinars, and we'd love to see you there.